Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Making this one here to help you out with number 11 in your homework. So let's see, um, <clears throat> a clever person has trained their uh, big T-Rex here to tow the system shown. Let's see, assume both, both vehicles are free to roll. So what that basically means is to not worry about frictional forces acting on these vehicles. So <clears throat> the questions that are about drawing free body diagrams are um, questions about how to define your systems. So let me talk about the first one here. I'm going to use green for this. So uh, draw a free body diagram of the car truck system. So the car truck system means we are defining our system like this. And you'll notice the T-Rox is not inside of that uh, part of that system. So what you want to do is, I, I like to say clone it, but draw a picture of the system over here maybe somewhere. Right, and then the trick is recognizing external forces acting on the system. So right here, right, we have a rope coming across this boundary. You're definitely going to need a force vector for that tension, which is pulling right on the truck. The truck has a weight to it. That probably should be in the free body. Same thing with the car. Now, whether you put separate forces for the weights of the truck and car, it's kind of up to you. You can lump them together into one force vector. It's perfectly fine. Uh, same thing with the normal forces. So the truck is being supported at the ground here and another tire on the other side that we, you know, presumably can't say, see. Same thing here and here. So in all technicality, one could say there's like six normal forces on that truck. Well, what you would typically do is <clears throat> group them into one single uh, normal force vector up on the truck. And again, we have a normal uh, force vectors acting on the car as well. Right, you can group those all into one if you wish and uh, put one single force vector up on the system. Now, a very important thing to realize is what's going on here now. So there's a rope connecting the car and the truck, but notice that rope does not cross this boundary here. Right, So that's an example of what's called an internal force. Internal forces don't need to be included in the free bodies. And even if you did try to include it, that rope is pulling right on the car, but left on the truck and ends up adding to zero anyway. So that should hopefully help you draw a free body of the car truck system. Let's talk about the next one. Let's see, draw a free body diagram of the truck. So now we're defining our system like this. So now we have a rope crossing that boundary here and here. So this force vector due to that tension or that rope, that's no longer an internal force. If you're considering only the truck, that's an external force. So <clears throat> your free body definitely should have a force vector for this rope, a force vector for this rope, a gravitational force acting on the truck, and a normal force. All right, let's see what the, if there's any more for the directions here. Draw a free body diagram of the car. So. Now, what we're doing, all right, we're going to draw a free body of this part of the system. And again, the Rex is nowhere in sight. You're looking for forces coming outside the boundary here, all right? So there's a rope right there <clears throat> that's acting to the right on the car. And then the car has a weight and a normal. And uh, that's pretty well it. Okay, now. Let's see, find the force that the Rex applies to the system if we observe the system to accelerate at two meter per second per second. So what you can do now is go to your free body diagram from here and write a Newton's second law equation. Sum of all forces in the x direction, or I'll just call it the x direction, is equal to mass times acceleration. You should have only one force in the horizontal direction. If you have your free body done, that that should be reasonably clear what that force is. And here where it says to find the tension in the cable between the car and the truck, you can do this a couple different ways. I think the simplest is to go to your free body diagram of the car. Now again, if you've defined your system like this, there should only be one force acting in the horizontal direction on that car. So a Newton's second law equation applied to that should be reasonably simple. So hopefully this helps you get through number 11. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.